Hey guys, today we're going to talk about uh, the best and worst dairy products. Okay, let's start over here. The ideal situation is to find 100% grass-fed organic. Okay, now they do have a something new called truly grass-fed, and that's 95% grass-fed, so that's pretty good. Uh, but when it says 100%, it has to be I think 98%, not exactly 100%, but it's close. Now, organic means no pesticide, no animal byproducts. And you know what that means? It means that they actually can put legally waste product of another animal into the feed. And then we have something called RBST. This is a growth hormone. Now, Monsanto, the company that sells this, will tell you that this is totally safe. There's no studies, et cetera, et cetera. But then why did uh, Canada not allow this hormone since 2000. Europe, they haven't allowed this since 1990. And it's been banned in Australia, Japan, Israel, and Argentina. But only in America do we have the R RBST. So we want to have RBST free dairy. Ideally, grass fed organic ghee would be really, really healthy. This is really good for your gut. Um, it's a pure fat. Whole cream, make sure it's at least organic, half and half organic, but try to get grass fed. The best cheese would be raw goat's cheese or raw sheep cheese. And of course, non-GMO, but if you're doing organic, it's going to be non-GMO. Now, you can also do plain kefir, of course, organic and grass fed. And this has uh, a much better uh, friendly bacteria profile than yogurt. Uh, if you're going to do yogurt, Greek yogurt is better because it has more protein and less carbs, but it still has too many carbs if you're gonna do keto. All right, so now over here you have grain fed, okay? I don't know if you realize this, but they will feed cows, grains, soy, and corn, and they're usually GMO. So you're getting exposure to glyphosate, okay? Uh, I would not recommend commercial milk or processed cheese. Commercial dairy products usually have the RBST in there, okay? They have antibiotics and animal byproducts. And sometimes when you're doing keto, people really load up on the dairy. The problem is that many, many people have a casein allergy. That's the protein in the dairy. And so they're, they're getting bloating. They're getting all sorts of issues. And another big issue is the lactose intolerance. Okay, This is the milk sugar because our bodies stop making uh, lactase, the enzyme that breaks down this milk sugar, right around like five years old. So we have very small amounts, if any. So a lot of people um, get a lot of bloating, diarrhea, uh, when they consume milk products. Uh, it's not a true allergy, it's just lacking that enzyme. And then when you're going to the grocery store and buying just regular yogurt that's sweetened, you're getting massive amounts of sugar. And when you combine that fat with that sugar, it's not good. The only condition that you want to consume a high fat diet is when you're doing low carb. You never want to do high carb with high fat or even high carb with high protein. And this is why ice cream is even more deadlier because they're putting so much fat and sugar at the same time. Uh, you're just going to just really spike the insulin and clog up your arteries. Also, some of the so-called keto friendly ice creams out there still have like six grams of sugar. That's still too high. So you want this down to two or, or less. A lot of people that are doing the keto program are dairy free and they do very well because there is some problems with dairy, um, potentially increasing the size of the prostate. Uh, if you're doing a lot of dairy, uh, especially this type of dairy. Also, people are getting a lot of mucus reactions from dairy. So if you're going to do dairy, uh, stick over here and try to do small amounts, not large amounts. All right. I'll see you guys later. So I want to thank you for being here and watching my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so so you can stay informed of future videos.